Welcome to section 10 of fungi. This is our fungi overview figure. In this video, we'll be discussing Cryptococcus neoformans, which you can see right here. This scene will take place in a crypt underneath a religious cathedral. If you look closely, you can see several coffins with mummies inside. In any case, the word crypt sounds like Cryptococcus. So this image is all about Cryptococcus neoformans. Now you can see that we've added a woman to the image. She is the priestess who is in charge of this crypt and she likes to spend her time drawing because this script can be kind of isolating and depressing for her. Notice that she's holding a religious staff with two balls on the end that are separated by a narrow stalk. The two spherical balls represent budding yeast, and the narrow stalk in between the two balls should make you think of narrow-based budding. So, Cryptococcus neoformans exhibits narrow-based budding. I introduced this idea in section 2 of fungi, but let's briefly review it again here. When yeast cells divide through budding, they most commonly form a stalk like this, and then a second yeast will form off of the stalk like this. This type of budding is referred to as narrow-based budding. So, Cryptococcus is no exception and exhibits narrow-based budding. Now if we zoom up, you can see that we've written 5 to 10 micrometers on one of the coffins, which is to help you remember that Cryptococcus is approximately 5 to 10 micrometers in length. Also notice that she's drawing an angel with an ink pen, and that there is a little halo on top of the angel's head. The ink is a reference to the India ink stain, and the halo should help you remember the clear halo seen in the stain. So Cryptococcus can be identified using the India ink stain, which will show a clear halo surrounding the pathogen. This is an image of Cryptococcus using the India ink stain. You can see little black circles, for example, right here. This represents the central part of the pathogen, and surrounding these circles are clear halos, for example, right here. These halos form due to the thick capsule present in Cryptococcus. If we return to the image now, notice that we've shown a pigeon sitting on a pipe. You can see some pigeon droppings falling to the ground on a dirty floor. Together, these ideas are here to help you remember that Cryptococcus is found in soil and pigeon droppings. Next, notice that we've shown a medical examiner guy bringing in a dead body. This is a crypt after all, so it makes sense that dead bodies are being stored here, right? Anyway, if you look around this body, you can see a bunch of dust flying into the air, which is being inhaled by the medical examiner. This is here to help you remember that Cryptococcus is acquired through inhalation. Unfortunately, this crypt is kind of falling apart. We've got a pigeon infestation on one side and sewer pipes breaking on the other side. Notice that some of the urine is spilling onto the ground below. Hopefully you recall from our bacteria chapter that the pool of urine represents urease. So Cryptococcus is urease positive. Again, we covered this test in our bacteria videos, but recall that the pink color in the test tube right here indicates that the organism is urease positive. Now you can see that we've shown a Bible next to this religious priestess, and she has opened it to a page that says, Keep the Sabbath day holy. The word Sabbath sounds like Sabaro, and is here to help you remember that Cryptococcus can be grown on Sabaro dextrose agar. This is an image of Sabaro dextrose agar. You can see little colonies of Cryptococcus forming on the agar, for example, right here. Now we've added another body bag being dragged into this crypt. Let's zoom up on this so you can see it better. Notice that this dead person is in a red sack. This is a symbol for the capsule because the bag is surrounding this dead body, just like the capsule surrounds the center part of the pathogen. Also notice that there are music symbols nearby from the organ that you can see in the background. The word music sounds like musicarmine, and should make you think of this stain. So putting all these ideas together should help you remember that Cryptococcus neoformans can be identified using the musicarmine stain, which reveals a red capsule. This is an image of the musicarmine stain taken from the lung. You can see a prominent red circular shape, for example, right here, and this represents the inner layer of the capsule. Now if you look closely at the girl carrying this bag, you can see that she's wearing latex gloves. These should make you think of the latex agglutination test. In this test, you mix latex beads with a sample of interest. The beads are coated with antibodies that detect the capsular antigen. So if the sample contains Cryptococcus, then the latex beads will clump together as the antibodies bind to the capsular antigens, and this is known as agglutination. So in summary, the latex agglutination test can be used to identify the polysaccharide capsular antigen. Because this is an antibody, it's more specific and sensitive than other tests. Now let's turn our attention to the medical examiner guy and discuss some of the clinical features of Cryptococcus. First, notice that he's bringing in the body on a stretcher. This is our symbol for a compromised immune system. Next, you can see that a large band-aid was placed on top of the bag and it says 50-year-old male. The band-aid should make you think of AIDS, and the 50-year-old male reference should make you think of a CD4 count of 50. So putting all these ideas together should help you remember that Cryptococcus commonly causes disease in immunocompromised patients, such as AIDS patients with a CD4 count less than 50. Like I mentioned earlier, the dust is going up near the medical examiner's face, causing him to cough. The cough itself should make you think of a lung infection. 
However, symptomatic lung infections are uncommon. It's most important to know that cryptococcus is aerialized and that the primary site of infection is in the lungs, but most of the time patients are asymptomatic. If we look back at the priestess, notice that she's wearing an intricate looking religious hat. The hat is our symbol for the meninges. So we've included it here to help you remember that after establishing itself in the lungs, cryptococcus can disseminate to the meninges through the blood and cause meningitis. Next, notice that we've shown another guy off to the right who is cleaning one of the coffins. Notice that he's getting his head covered in the urine that's leaking from the pipe up above. The head getting drenched like this is our symbol for encephalitis. So this is here to help you remember that cryptococcus can also cause encephalitis. Also notice that there are a bunch of bubbles on top of the coffin. We've included this to the image to help you remember that imaging may reveal soap bubble lesions in the brain. All right, now let's finish up with treatment. If we zoom back up on the priestess, notice that she has a flute and a sigh on her back. Flute sigh sounds like flucytosine. So flucytosine can be used to treat cryptococcal meningitis. Next, notice that she's wearing an intricate looking religious shawl with the letter A on it. This is to help you remember that azoles, such as fluconazole, can be used. Finally, notice that the priestess has been busy with her artwork and finished a picture of a frog off to the left. The frog, or amphibian, is here to help you remember that amphotericin B can also be used. All right, now that we've covered the image, let's review with a question. A 50-year-old female with a history of HIV is brought to the emergency department by her husband due to sudden onset confusion. He states that this morning she got lost driving her car and had difficulty remembering the year. Her temperature is 38.8 degrees Celsius or 101.8 degrees Fahrenheit. Physical examination reveals nuchal rigidity. A lumbar puncture is performed and cerebrospinal fluid is sent to the laboratory for further analysis. A latex agglutination test is positive. This patient's neurological findings most likely occurred following hematogenous dissemination from which of the following regions? A, skin, B, nares, C, lungs, D, ear canal, or E, urinary tract. Okay, hopefully from the question sem, you notice that this patient has HIV, sudden onset confusion, a fever of 38.8 degrees Celsius, and a positive agglutination test. Collectively, these findings should have made you think of meningitis caused by cryptococcus neoformans. So the correct answer is C, lungs. Recall from the image that the dust right here represents the fact that the organism is acquired through inhalation. The cough right here should help you remember that cryptococcus can cause lung infections and that this is the primary site of infection before hematogenous spread occurs. Finally, the intricate hat right here should help you remember that cryptococcus can cause meningitis, which is what the patient had. Many bacterial pathogens can cause meningitis and can disseminate from the nares or other locations. However, these would not have a positive latex agglutination test. So A, B, D, and E are incorrect, and the correct answer is C, lungs. And with that, we've covered everything you need to know about cryptococcus neoformans.